All right, this is pre-calculus section 2.5, graphing techniques, techniques and transformations. Um, we're going to first look at vertical and horizontal shifts. So if we have a function and we add 3 to the entire function, it's going to have a vertical shift up. So if you look each of the y coordinates, you get 3 added to them. So it moves the entire graph up 3 units. When you take that same function and subtract an amount from it, it gives it a vertical shift down. So if you take the y coordinate and it subtracts 4 from each one, and that moves the entire graph down four units. So to compare the three things on one graph, the y equals x squared, y equals x squared plus 2, and y equals x squared minus 2, you get your parent graph right here. The plus 2 shifts it up two units. The minus 2 shifts it down two units. So if a positive real number k is added to the output of a function y equals f of x, the graph of the new function y equals f of x plus k is the graph of f shifted vertically up k units. If a positive real number k is subtracted from the output of a function y equals f of x, the graph of the new function y equals f of x minus k is the graph of F shifted vertically down k units. Plus is up, minus is down. All right, now we're going to get shifty to the right. So we take our function and we replace x with a minus with an x minus two. When we do that, it changes our y coordinate. And so it kind of shuffles these around. So instead of our graph being here at y equals um, centered on the origin, it actually shifts to the right two units. So shifting to the right, we have a minus sign. <clears throat> shifting to the left, it'll be the plus. So we look at three things on the graph. Here's our parent function. When we have x minus 3 squared, that shifts it to the right 3 units. When we have x plus 2 squared, it shifts it to the left 2 units. So it is opposite the vertical shift. All right, so left-hand side is when I have a plus replacing the x value with a x plus a number. So here's our parent function. x plus 4 squared moves this entire graph to the left 4 units. All right, so putting them together, this graph will be shifted down 5 units and to the left 3 units. So here's the parent. The plus 3 shifts it to the left 3 units, and the minus 5 shifts it down 5 units. Alright, compressions and stretches. If I have an absolute value function, what's the graph of that 2 times the absolute value function? And what it does is it doubles all of your output. So instead of this ni nice wide graph, it's going to stretch it and make it, I call it, taller. So doubling, having a value that is greater than 1 makes your graph skinnier. All right. Vertical compression. Um, so when we have an absolute value function and we multiply it by 1 half, it's going to lessen our outputs by one half and instead of our parent function here it's going to squish or I, I consider it like a big brick being placed on here and it's pressing it down making it fatter. 
So the moral of the story is when you're multiplying by a positive number and your number is between 0 and 1, it's compressed. When it's greater than 1, it's stretched. Um, so if you graph um, y equals the square root of x, y equals um, the square root of 2x, y equals 1 half, the square root of 1 half x. So now we're looking at a horizontal stretch. So when I have my parent function, if I have 2 inside the root, it grows. If I have one half inside the root, it kind of shrinks that down. And you can see how the, the values compare to each other. Alright, so the moral of the story is when I replace x with some value a times x, I'm going to get a stretch if it's between 0 and 1, and I'm going to get a compression if it's greater than 1. So it's once again, it's opposite the vertical. Alright, putting it all together, looking at my graph here, I am going to find the graphs of double my graph. All right, so if think about all of these. So if I had pi over 2 and it was 1 to begin with, I'm going to double that 1, the output, so it's going to be 2. So it's actually going to be taller here. And same thing with this coordinate. 3 pi over 2 used to give me negative 1. I'm going to double that, so it's going to come down to negative 2. So all of my coordinates, it's going to make our graph taller both on the top and the bottom. So here the horizontal stretch, so I'm going to replace my x value with three x's and instead of um, it's going to quicken the cycle. So instead of happening at pi over 2, it's going to happen at pi over 6, one third quicker and a third of the time. So pi over 2 times 1 third is pi over 6. So instead of being pi over 2, 1, it's going to be pi over 6, 1. And same thing here. It's going to be done in a third of the time. Boom. So instead of being done at 3 pi, it's going to be done at pi. All right, we're going to use reflection about the x-axis and the y-axis. To reflect about the x-axis, um, all we have to do is re, uh, take our function and multiply it by a negative 1. Automatically reflects about the x-axis. Alright, so when we reflect about the x-axis, we replace our x value with negative x. So here is our parent function, y equals the square root of x, and here is our reflected function, y equals the square root of negative x. So we replace our x value with a negative x. All right, so to shift it up, we add it to the function. To shift it down, we subtract. To shift it left, we add to the inside of the function. To shift it right, we subtract. To compress vertically, we have our value between 0 and 1. And to stretch vertically, we have our number, our multiplying number greater than 1. And then um, horizontally, it stretches the graph horizontally if it's between 0 and 1, and it compresses the graph horizontally if it is greater than 1. And that's when we replace x with a constant times x. 
Reflection about the x-axis is when we take our entire function and multiply it by negative 1. Reflection about the y-axis is when we replace all of our x's with a negative x. All right, so we've got a nice series here. <clears throat> We're going to go y equals absolute value of x. We're going to shift it left two units, up three units, and reflect it about the y-axis. So we're going to have to sub, uh, add 2 inside the function. We're going to have to add 3 to get it to shift it up 3. And we're going to have to multiply the entire thing by negative 1. Or replace x oh, about the y-axis, sorry. Replace x with a negative x. All right, so we're going to do that with this function as well. We start with our items that are closest. So here's our parent function, y equals 1 over x. We're going to multiply that by 3, so that's a vertical stretch. So it makes it go even further. We're going to shift it to the right two units. Boom, boom. And then we're going to move it up one unit. All right, let's do that with the square root function. We start with our parent function. The first thing we're going to do is add a 1 to it to move it left one unit. Then we're going to replace it with a negative, and that reflects it. Then we're going to add 2 to move it up two units. And that's the end of that.